Welcome to part two of Bronze Balloon Sculpture. If you missed part one, you should go check it out. It covered all of the lost wax and bronze casting process. Some of this may not make total sense, but it's still pretty cool anyways. Starting in part two, we get to clean up and prep the bronze castings to get them ready for welding and finishing and painting. In this shot is the inside of a sandblasting cabinet. It's totally ruining my camera, by the way. This isn't completely necessary, but it removes the leftover ceramic shell from where we left off in part one. This shell can be hard and abrasive on tools, so if you have a sandblaster, the step is worth taking. All of the efforts in the first video to get this sculpture to this point start to unravel and be undone. This is where all of the previously waxed sprues and channels get removed to build the sculpture into its final form. You can cut these off with plasma cutters or an angle grinder or I just chose to weld them off with 200 amp power. Um, it's all kind of the same, it's really just your preference. And all of these cut off sprues get recycled back into the next casting batch and melted back down into potentially new sculptures in the future. And what you want to be left with is the closest possible shape as your original working item, in this case a balloon, in preparation to start rebuilding. This process is recreation or more duplication. So after removing a majority of the sprues, what we're left with is a very close to the original wax duplicates. There's just some fine tuning and trimming left to make space and room to tightly place all of the pieces back together in their rightful places. While I'm grinding these sprue nubs off, I'm also cleaning the metal and adding a small bevel to the edge for the future when the window will be added back to close this hole up. And these are called windows because that's basically what there are. They're done in the casting process seen in part 1 of this video to help drainage and drying of the ceramic shell process. Basically they aid in airflow for drying. It's sort of a necessary evil. It creates more work to help prevent massively more work and casting errors in the future. Here's the first chance I get to see my previous efforts, checking the fit to rejoin the pieces. They match up with relative ease. It's the same process with the isolated balloon knot, grinding the sprue knots off to check the fitment. In part one, I spent time with the wax to make sure these pieces had a tight fit and it pays off now. All I have to do is check clearance and they're ready to be welded back in with little hassle. In the early stages of building or rebuilding the sculpture, you want to knock out as much prep work as possible. Here I weld a sacrificial piece of plate into the big window so I can secure it in a vise. This holds it tight so I can sand it down without worrying about having to hold it or it moving around very much. In line with the prep work, this balloon is going to end up mirror polished. The polishing process is a progressive set of steps of increasing grit sandpaper on a grinder. While I have the window out, I'll perform a few of the progressive sanding grits just to get them out of the way now while this piece is easy to manage. I'll start with 80 grit and move up to 120 and then 220 grit. These lower grits are important to be patient with because you can cut or introduce grooves or warbles into the shape of the metal which will show up in the surface of the polish later on. The large window is ready to be set aside for now. Most of the prep work has been completed. Now we'll do a similar process with the main balloon section. It gets a sacrificial plate welded inside to hold it in place in the vise. The process continues on in a similar fashion. The sanding grip progression starts at 80, moves to 120, and finishes off at 220. Something I didn't show were small dings or pits in the surface of the metal. They get welded shut and sanded smooth to help create a continuous smooth balloon-like surface. Sometimes these flaws happen in the casting process and they just need to be fixed up a little bit. This next part may seem a little wacky or counterproductive after doing all of that surface prep work, but it's a helpful technique. I take a piece of welding rod and tack it to the surface of the window. 
This makes me an impromptu handle so I can hold and fit the main window back into place as close to seamlessly and close to the original balloon as possible. It's not shown very well, but I use the welding rod slash handle to guide the window around to match the seam lines up. And now that the window is in place, I start to tack it and fuse it into its final home. I'm making minor adjustments as I go to keep the seam line as seamless as possible. The heat of welding warps and moves metal way more than you'd ever expect, causing ripples and warping. I add a bunch of small tacks to aid in the structure of the metal for the future when I decide to weld the entire seam line continuously. Once the tacking is complete, I'm ready to weld the full seam. One important but also counterintuitive aspect is that all of these welds get sanded off immediately afterwards and get sanded flush. It's important that I don't have any pitting and that all of my welds are positive or convex and without any holes, gaps, pits, or undercuts because this will show blatantly in the smoothness of the surface of the balloon. Now to immediately remove the welds. They get a rough sanding and blending with about an 80 grit to remove the seam line. Now that's one window down and it's starting to look more like a balloon. After this, we'll do the same process with the isolated balloon knot. And here's a view of the roughed out main balloon section. I cut out some of the balloon knot prep. It's the same process. Also, if you watched part one, this is where I showed spending a lot of time making sure these pieces would all line up properly. It seems to have paid off in metal seeing them now. Before I go any further, I want to prep a spot which I can mount to later. I mocked it up on the table in the position I liked and then marked it with a sharpie. I took it to a disc sander and flattened a small spot on the bottom. Here I am wrestling with old drill bits I found on the ground or in the garbage. There are a few ways to do mounts. The best is probably drill and tap the actual bronze, but the metal was really thin in the flat spot. I decided to instead bore out a hole big enough so that I could fit a stainless nut in and then hard weld it in place. This gave it back some of its beefiness and structure. This is similar to the windows, but on a smaller scale. I tacked the nut in a few places and then fully welded it in. The welds get sanded flush and this finishes off the permanent mounting spot for later on. This final window of the isolated balloon knot is pretty similar to everything that was shown previously, so I cut a bunch of it out and I let it run through quickly. I fit the window, tack it in, hard weld, and sand the seam smooth. This is the final piece before I begin the finishing of the sanding grip progression and the mirror polish process. Starting somewhere around here, I bump the sanding grit higher and higher. I jumped from the prep grit of 80, 120, and 220 all the way up to around 600. Then from 600 to 1200, 1200 to 1800, 1800 to 2000, 3000, and then finally I end at 5000. I used a special 3M foam sanding disc that was designed for paint and repurposed it for bronze polishing. Because the balloon knot is a strange amorphous shape, I used a more traditional polishing method isolated from the rest of the balloon. This was a green buffing compound used on muslin buffing wheels to mirror out the knot by itself. The buff leaves a black residue, so I used a soft bristled toothbrush and a pH neutral solvent, and it's pH neutral to not patina the bronze, to clean away the gunk, and, and I'm left with a perfectly polished balloon knot. And this is a quick view of the completed polishing process of that balloon knot. This whole balloon is about a quarter or two thirds of the way through. You can see some scratches on the main balloon part. The same way I mentioned earlier that I had repurposed 3M sanding discs made for paint to polish the bronze that I'm working on, I also did that for the final step of my mirror polish process. 
I sand it all the way down to 5000 grit and as the last step I use a 3M paint buffing compound to completely mirror the bronze surface. I also use it on an orbital grinder which is slightly unorthodox for buffing compound, typically they're used on a rotary grinder. I cut a lot of this final sanding and buffing out, it took many many hours, but this is the final product. I clean it well with an acetone and then spot check it a couple times and then get it completely ready for paint. This is a difficult paint job to attempt and again an unorthodox process. Most paints don't recommend painting directly onto mirror polished surfaces because the paint doesn't have grooves in the metal to mechanically latch or grab onto. I use an outdoor sign paint made by Matthews Paint because it maintains specific traits conducive to keeping this paint scheme last on this type of finish and sculpture. They don't recommend or guarantee this process, I pretty much brute forced it into doing what I wanted to but it seems to work for me. The paint comes in a clear urethane and I add a translucent urethane dye to achieve the color that I'm going for in the finished product. Once the paint is cured, it's back to more sanding and polishing. This is a pretty standard automotive process wet sanding to remove orange peel and dust spots left over from the paint process. I start with 800 grit and dip it in a little bit of water and then sand and sand and sand and sand until all of the major flaws are removed. I skipped through a lot of this footage, but you get it, it's just sanding for hours and hours and hours. Next you move on to 1500 grit and repeat the process. And then 2000 grit. And then finally a special 3000 grit 3M foam pad. And the very very final step is a 3M paint buffing compound to bring back the shine in the paint after all of the sanding. At this point I'm almost dead from sanding and painting but I can see the finish line. So hopefully this ending isn't too terribly disappointing, but photographing and filming mirror polished sculptures is incredibly difficult because you only just see the reflection of me and the camera in it. So instead I threw in some photographs and I tried to put them in a white box and get rid of some of the reflection. Um, but I have an Instagram, you can follow that. There's plenty of other pictures there of this sculpture too. And thanks for watching this all the way through. I have a couple other projects coming up on my channel. I'm making a furnace and a kiln to do smaller bronze castings. I'm going to do a bunch of other goofy stuff with that. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but I'm going to try to do some strange bronze castings.